Last week, developer Panic Button released a patch for Doom on the Nintendo Switch, and to say that people were excited about its potential would be a vast understatement. Our viewers were very interested in seeing just what this patch really offers, so I guess this is a case of ask and you shall receive, because that's exactly what we're looking at today. Now, I was already blown away by what Panic Button achieved on the Switch with Doom, but the game did have its fair share of issues. Significant frame rate drops could pop up in busy combat sequences, frame pacing errors were visible throughout, the sound mixing was a huge step down, and it generally runs at a low resolution. That doesn't sound great in isolation, of course, but when you consider that it's running on a Tegra X1 powered Switch, well, it's rather impressive. Which is why I was so interested to see if this patch could address those issues. Just how much headroom does Panic Button really have here? Well, the first thing is the icon, which has been updated to match the game's excellent retail box art. A good choice, I think. Alright, well, with the most important improvement out of the way then, we can move on to performance and image quality. Firstly, the patch notes suggest that they've increased the average resolution in lower res areas of the game. This is an interesting thing, as Doom is a very dynamic game in terms of resolution scaling. The game is constantly adjusting its resolution to maintain performance, so it's almost impossible to present a true average number here. Compared to our original Switch shots though, we did find some interesting results. With motion blur enabled, which is how I like to play, it's only really possible to pixel count shots when, well, not in motion. So when comparing the two, the results we found, well, suggest that we're looking at similar pixel counts. Sometimes it's slightly higher than the original version, but other times, that original version has an advantage. But clearly, it's during combat that this matters most, and the only way to pixel count Doom in motion is to disable motion blur. Doing so reduces the load on the GPU slightly, however, so the resolution might push a little higher than it otherwise would with blur enabled. Now, it's difficult to present a true average here, but based on a series of pixel counts and comparisons, the game does appear to hit 720p more often in situations where you might expect it to drop, though we still regularly ran into drops in the 648p range, and in many cases, the horizontal and vertical axes adjust themselves separately, it seems. The point here is that, while there is a difference, the perceptual effect is not really significant. It's still a very blurry game overall. It's even more difficult to determine this when in handheld mode, but pixel counts do not suggest a transformative improvement here. So it may be improved, but don't go in expecting a world of difference. That's at least my experience in testing half of the game's levels. But that doesn't mean there aren't improvements to be found. In its original form, Doom was somewhat rough on the Switch in terms of frame rate. During quiet moments and in basic combat scenes, you could certainly hit 30 frames per second, but frame persistence was often inconsistent, and those heavy scenes really dropped hard. Take this scene for instance. This is what I tested back around launch, and as you can see, the frame rate can drop like a rock in the right situation, even dipping below the 20 FPS line in very select instances. Now, this was played in arcade mode on Nightmare Difficulty, by the way, which is indeed a nightmare situation for the Switch, but it's how I like to play Doom. Now, playing the same scene using the same settings with the patch installed reveals something interesting. There's still drops, and those drops can be significant, but overall, fluidity is improved here. I never managed to drop performance below the 20 FPS line, and in fact, the game mostly stays above 25 FPS. It's not a night and day leap necessarily, but it's a noticeable improvement and the game definitely plays better. And for the record, the average frame rate for this scene with the patch is 27.56 FPS, while the original version was just 25.6 FPS. Two extra frames may not sound like much, but eliminating those huge drops really helps a lot. Of course, you might also notice some 16 millisecond spikes along the frame time graph. Yes, when the system is taxed, frame ordering goes out of whack, just like the original release, leading to additional stutter beyond the genuine performance drops. It's the same frame pacing issue we found in the original game, and it's still just as distracting. Okay, so let's check out another major action scene. This sequence is similarly heavy on the Switch in its original form, with heavy, sustained drops below the 30fps line and a lot of inconsistencies on the frame time graph. Considering that Nightmare difficulty demands faster response, the huge performance issues here make this a lot less enjoyable to play. So how does it fare with the patch? 
Well, the first part here with the barrel explosion and lots of enemies sees similarly harsh drops, but it's not quite to the same degree as the original footage, but it's certainly not great. However, once you've dealt with these initial foes, the average performance climbs much closer to 30 frames per second. Frame pacing isn't always correct, and it still feels somewhat jittery to play, but overall it's a noticeable improvement in terms of frame rate. So at this point we have very similar image quality, but a 2-3 FPS average performance improvement in heavy scenes. If you're just playing the game on normal difficulty, the frame rate holds much closer to 30 FPS throughout the run of play in less demanding scenes, which isn't so bad. The testing did remind me of one other issue however, the audio mix. Doom still doesn't sound quite right. Everything is more compressed and flat than the original version and it just kind of lacks the same punch. This might be the result of compressing the audio down, but it's really noticeable, especially when pumping the game through a powerful sound system. Conversely, there is one other improvement I wanted to mention, and that's the gyro-based aiming. It's now possible to enable this feature, allowing you to simply move your controller around to dial in shots. While Doom itself doesn't require a ton of precision, it does help line up distant shots with more accurate weapons. It really does work pretty well, I have to say. One downside to using the gyro though is the impact it has on the fluidity of the camera movement. Unless your hands are perfectly still, the camera kind of bounces around slightly during gameplay, which robs the game of its super fluid movement. It's a bit like watching someone play a VR game on a 2D monitor in that sense as it directly translates your hand motion to the screen. Just something to consider when using it. Overall though, I love this feature and it's a lot of fun to mess with. But that's really it as far as our scope is concerned. There were a lot of hopes and dreams pinned on this patch, and it certainly does offer improvements, but it's not a massive overhaul either. Still, bumping that average frame rate up by 2 to 3 FPS in busy scenes is nothing to sneeze at, and the lack of those huge drops to 20 FPS is also great. It's a solid patch all around, but not a miracle solution. It is great, however, to see the developer listening so closely to its fans and implementing enhancements like gyro aiming and performance improvements. Well done, Panic Button. That's all for now though, if you enjoyed this video be sure to like, subscribe and follow us on Twitter and until next time, this is John signing off.